Time now for Uncanned Soup. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And the environmental group Greenpeace uh, brought anything but peace to the sleepy North Yorkshire village of Richmond today as several of their members managed to break into the grounds of Rishi Sunak's mansion before four of them climbed onto the roof. So I sent my senior producer, Ben Leo, down to their swanky London headquarters this afternoon where he was invited inside to see how they liked their private space being invaded. Your idea to invade... Well, you weren't Rishi... invited, first of all. We weren't uh, invited? No, you weren't. Oh, how ironic. Uh, you, were you invited to Rishi Sunak's house this morning? Uh, he's the Prime Minister of the country. I'm just going to make myself a cup of tea, if that's all right. Yeah. Who thinks Sunak's house invasion was a good idea? Anyone? What team do you guys work in? Are you press? Marketing, who, who's the giga brain that invented that idea today? You're paid a hundred grand a year for ideas like that. Are you going to apologise for, for what you've done what today? What should I apologise for? For turning up at uh, not just a Prime Minister's house, a, pro a private man's home if where he lives speak. with his family. It doesn't you matter. Let me speak, Does it? I will answer your speak. Question. Yeah. Defend it. Yeah, it was a peaceful protest. Calvin McKenzie, I mean, this is an astonishing story on so many levels. Uh, but first, your reaction to the fact that Greenpeace didn't really like Ben Leo doing the same thing that they did to the PM? No, that, that was a bloody good piece of journalism. Though. I mean, I was astonished to find out that Greenpeace were paying 100 grand a year to some, some uh, comms lady. So I thought that was amazing. But look, the truth about the matter, he is our prime minister. I don't care what political party is, his home needs to be defended. Where on earth were uh, Yorkshire police? Where on earth was any form of security organised by Number 10? Why didn't any of this happen? And the other aspect is Greenpeace seemed to be in competition with Just Stop Oil to see who can come up with the maddest stunt. But to have somebody climb up on top of your own roof while you're away on holiday in Disneyland is an absolute disgrace. And of course, they'll be delighted. Greenpeace will be delighted at all this publicity. But the truth about the matter is, Rishi deserves our congratulations. Why? Because I see only tonight that it's been announced that the Saudis are going to cut the price of oil, uh, cut the amount of oil they produce by a million barrels a day, and Russia are cutting it by half a million barrels a day. Why? Because they're trying to drive the price up. So actually, mm. with Rishi saying the North Sea should be opened up for more oil exploration, he is doing us a favour. There is no way that our country can survive over the next 20 years without oil. Oil is our blood. And the problem is that the publicity from, you know, that was a brilliant piece by that guy, Leo. I, I don't really know him. I sometimes see him around his studio. A great piece by that. They don't like it up them. And that's within their own office. Oh, God knows what they would like if we climbed yeah. above their rather house somewhere in Tooting Beck or somewhere. You know, Indeed. It, the truth about the matter is that the people who own oil around the world are in cartels and they're trying to make you with your heating of your house and you're filling up your petrol. They're trying to, to squeeze every penny out. As somebody pointed out to me, mainly in Saudi, so we can play Liverpool footballers, they're £700,000 a week out in Saudi. No, the truth is the Saudis are in trouble and they are trying to squeeze the life out of us. We should hate, hate, hate the Greenpeace people. They're trying to pay us more. They're trying to make us pay more for our energy. It is quite, quite wrong. No, indeed. And I think you're very right to talk about the police there because seven hours those folk were on the roof of Sunak's house. How is that even possible? But look, I want to move on, uh, Calvin, to this big media story of the day. You'll remember that the radio legend Ken Bruce left his BBC mid-morning Radio 2 slot after more than 30 years back in March. He was effectively forced to jump ship to the commercial rival Greatest Hits Radio after the Beeb failed to sign a new contract with the 72-year-old. It's part of this purge of old... Uh, and especially white and especially male DJs, they just want rid of them. The consequence, Kelvin, is that Radio 2 has lost a million viewers. Yet the BBC still claim that this was a great success somehow. 
Yeah, well, that woman, Charlotte Moore, the head of content, has clearly, clearly gone quite potty. I mean, I feel quite sorry for her, and she should go and lie down somewhere. But the BBC are going through a very bad run. They've lost two million licence fee payers over the last year. Their entire audience has fallen by 4%, which is a huge number, by the way, in television. I mean, catastrophic number. And now on the Ken, the Ken Bruce thing represents something. It represents this was an older man who had a massive audience, and they said, do you know what? Do you mind if you... Get the hell out of it. We'll be delighted. And now to give great credit to Bauer Media, right, who decided to go and have a punt on this guy. It wasn't much of a punt, but he's been fantastic. And so the bloke who sat in his place, which is a guy called Vernon Kay, right, who honestly, you know, average sort of ho-hum kind of talent, It's he's lost a million and it's not going to get any better. The days of major broadcasters winning massive uh, market share or ma massive audiences are, are completely over. As the other Ofcom document showed today, really surprise to find older people can operate, you know, technologies on their television. Give us a break. No, I feel very sorry for other companies. There is at least one other company, which I won't bother to name, that had a, you can guess which one it was, had a disastrous, disastrous radar. And if they had hired uh, Ken Bruce and perhaps let uh, Chris Evans go, then Virgin Radio might be in better shape than it is tonight. The thing that I just think is extraordinary about the BBC is that these are all own goals. You know, it's not like Ken Bruce wanted to leave; they wanted rid of him. It's an extraordinary way. Well, it, uh, it, to treat it's true of it's, it's true of Steve Wright as well. Yeah, so he Steve didn't want Wright to go. May have looked he 180. Go. He may have looked 180. His voice sounded about 42. Yeah. What? Um, you're you're yeah. you're a listener. You're in radio. Nobody gives a damn what they also, look like. There's right? nothing that's wrong. Why, that's why I'd be good for radio. DJs. Yes, you do. You do. You've got the perfect face for it, Calvin McKenzie. Uh, thank you so much. Have a brilliant weekend. We will speak on Monday.